in the next one you have something on the chip sanctions yes. micro so, so this this goes back to do you want to put the, the first slide up for, for that one so this goes back to um when huawei released the mate 60 it's the microchip one Mickey. when uh, huawei released the mate 60 um it's probably about six weeks ago now but before um, that I, I th this March I, I was at a press conference um, at Huawei and it was really interesting because one of the um, media I, I don't know if it was BBC or Reuters or Bloomberg um, asked Huawei when they were going to release a 5G phone and uh, Meng Wanzhou answered the question saying well it's not really up to us it's it's when the US um, give us a license so it just shows you how tight-lipped and um, they were now going forward on that they released the phone and the initial microchip sanctions were to try and stop China um, achieving a uh, process node of 40 nanometer now just to give you an explanation what nanometer is it, it means that the density and how small that microchip circuitry is so it goes sort of 20 odd 14 10 7 uh, 5.3. Well, when Huawei um, released this phone, um, it was quickly established by um, a company in the US that they built this chip on a 7 nanometer node. And this was a massive shock to the US because they thought they were not going to be able to do that. You want to put the second slide up. So, what then happened is um, the US quickly thought, oh, crikey, what, what are we going to do? So they've come out with another um, rollout of, of sanctions. Um, now, the first round of sanctions affected some of the large um, US chip companies. So the, the biggest one is a company called NVIDIA. Um, so what they did, they then um, manufactured some special chips that they were allowed to sell to China. These chips, but basically the way chips communicate, um, they slowed down the way they could network with each other is, is the, the basic gist of, of what these um, special chips designed for the Chinese market to sort of get around the sanctions. And a number of Chinese companies went along with those chips. And then this latest sanctions is now prohibited the supply of those chips and they're primarily chips to build um, computers to process AI large language models um, but they've kind of shot themselves in the foot here the, the companies that went with these Nvidia chips are now falling over themselves to want to sign deals with Huawei because Huawei have a competing chip it's not quite as fast but the thing is, it, it, when you're developing a large language model, speed is not the main issue. So uh, Huawei have a chip called Kunpeng, and that's a seven nanometer chip. And they are building um, data centers to, to build large language models on using these Kunpeng chips. But what this means is that Huawei are gonna see a massive amount of, of sales because literally all these companies that went with these sort of revised American chips are now realizing that they made a mistake and they're all rushing to sign deals with Huawei. But the point is that once they go along this route using the Ascend and Kumpeng Huawei chips, they're never gonna to want to go, um, they'll never go back to America because the whole ecosystem is different, um, the software is different, you know, the, the whole architecture is very, very different. So it's kind of a one way street. And, you know, so America are, are, are gonna lose a, a huge amount. And then interestingly, the, the other thing is that in that chip Huawei developed for the, the uh, Mate 60, they actually developed their own 5G modem. Now that, People talk about this seven nan nanometer chip, but actually the 5G modem is, is a bigger deal because Apple have been trying to do that for two or three years and they were hoping in the iPhone 15 that Apple would include their own 5G modem and they failed. They had to go back to Qualcomm. Now interestingly, Qualcomm are the world's largest supplier of 5G modem chips and now Huawei have 
um, uh, produce their own. It will be interesting to see if other Chinese companies like the Xiaomi's, the Oppo's, the Vivo's, the OnePlus's actually start using Huawei's chip. And if that's the case, Qualcomm are going to lose billions of dollars in sales per year of yes, the, the yes. Qualcomm I, I, I think chips. Th that's exactly the question. Like, how fast can Huawei and others speed up uh, the, the the capacity, production capacity? Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what's going to happen. And it's not, you know, I mean, on one hand, the Communist Party in China is integrated in all major companies. So they have the possibility to basically order them to use Huawei chips instead of Qualcomm. But they won't even have to because it will just be so much more convenient to get the chips from inside China from a Huawei rather than import and depend on large, you know, like these, these supply chains from abroad. Uh, in case something happens in any crisis, you're just on the safe side if you do anything, if you do everything with a very local supply chain, local meaning inside China. And uh, at the same time, like I've been using Huawei for a decade now, just on my phone. So I really know the quality of Huawei R and D. They're really quality focused. So what Huawei produces is really, really reliable. And um, I'm sure the same thing will happen with chips. Huawei doesn't bring these chips and publish them in such a political environment where so much mm -hmm. eyes will be on this publication unless they're very sure that they can produce it and that they can scale it up. So yeah. I'm very oh. I'm very positive on Huawei. Yeah, I, I would be fairly certain that before Huawei released that phone, there was realization that further sanctions would be applied. You know, the, the, the Chinese people are not stupid mm -hmm. you know they knew that would yeah. be a big shock to the u.s and they knew follow and that leads me to believe it was a shock yeah it yeah. was to the u.s it wasn't to me because i yeah. speak to many people in that that field i, I was aware that they would got seven nanometer chips some time ago um and that's not yeah, I meant I to the media, like when I read yeah, how they responded in the West, it, it was a shock to many people in the West. Mm -hmm. I think so. But, they did not expect it this past. But I think the Chinese um, companies involved in the government would have anticipated those further um, sanctions. And that leads me to believe they're even further along the road to chip self sufficiency than even is available in in the public arena you know i i think there's going to be a lot of development and and developments made that they won't release until they're actually ready um but because they've done that they knew there was going to be a, a backlash from the us and i think they would have 100 percent have anticipated that yeah so yeah um, do we have more on this topic do we want to Move um, on. No, I mean, I, I think I, I think the, the last thing, if you want to bring up the, the, the third graphic, it, it's interesting that um, some uh, people within the in industry and in fact, somebody from TSMC, I think he was their ex legal counsel, if I remember rightly. But they're basically saying that the, the sanctions are, are pretty futile because it's not going to stop, you know, so so. so let me give you one example. So a, a, a large thing about the NVIDIA chips over Huawei's chips is they use a little less power. So if you've got thousands of these chips on a large supercomputer, um, the NVIDIA chips will, will use less power. But do you really think, does, does anybody really think that when it comes to say doing AI for military, that China are gonna be worried about using a little extra electricity you know it's just it's just nonsense really that that the um the u.s think and, and i think ultimately um the u.s are gonna massively regret their decision because they they are gonna you know once once china have got u.s chips out of their supply chain they will never ever trust the u.s again you know so it's yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they won't go and, back. And, and frankly, like the the 
way that's always worked best to really destroy an industry in a certain location is the opposite of sanction. It's to mm -hmm. dump, it's to swamp it. Like the the African textile and clothing industry is destroyed because we give all our old clothes to Africa for free, which means that the local producers have no way to sell their clothes if you mm -hmm. get clothes everywhere for free. And, and the same with social media in Europe. We don't have any social media companies in Europe because we get all the American social media for free. How do you want to compete with these small countries, with these different languages? You don't get more than 100 million people who speak the same language. How do you want to build a social network when everyone's already on Twitter and YouTube? Whereas China said, OK, we block that out. I simplify, it's not really blocking out. They made laws that these companies didn't want to follow, so they withdrew from the Chinese market. But it led to the situation where there was a vacuum which allowed Chinese entrepreneurs to basically just use the techniques of these American social media and, and use it in the Chinese market. And now you have these giant companies in China. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I digress. I digress. Uh, uh, just, just as a conclusion, I, I think the, the sanctions that America have put has just really pushed China to work harder because now they realize they, they, they can't trust. They won't, they won't trust anybody in, in, in these Western countries again. So they, they will make sure. And it's just driving them harder to innovate faster, you know. And, and so that's where I, I see that, that the, the, the collective West have made a huge error. And, and I think that, that very soon um, some of the countries that went along with um, America, you know, namely Taiwan and um, Japan and the Netherlands and, and Korea, they will start regretting their decisions when they see that actually... It hasn't achieved anything. All they've done is lost market share, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Taiwan's the one place that has an off ramp. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but for sure. More about yeah. that in another topic. <laughs> <laughs> All right.